The next speaker is Baroness Fox of Buckley. My Lords, I am glad to be here to discuss such an important piece of legislation. It needs to be taken seriously with the fullest debate. Sometimes debate can be hemmed in when an issue seems consensual. What is there to argue about? But I think there are some concerns we should raise. And also a debate can be hemmed in when an issue is highly emotive. And this is an emotive issue. There's something just so shocking about that breach of trust when intimate relationships turn toxic and descend into horror, especially because we associate intimacy with love, not terror. But it's also important to note that this is not the norm. Reading the briefings that we've all been sent has been relentlessly grim. But could we also remember that the vast majority of intimate relationships are a source of joy and solidarity? Family, families, per se, are not horrors behind closed doors. And even bad relationships shouldn't be a matter for law in most instances. It's also true that we need sensitivity and nuance when discussing the individual dynamics of people's intimate lives. We should note that sometimes third parties view the interactions between other couples as problematic and abusive, but they can't view that way by the individuals concerned. In that way, the law can be a blunt instrument and we need to take care when dealing with people's private affairs. The emotive nature of the uh, issue is understandable when we focus on the victims, but that should not mean that we dispense with careful scrutiny of the bill from the point of view of the accused. Not all are proven perpetrators. Civil liberties and principles of criminal law shouldn't be treated cavalierly, and we should, when we remember the rights of the accused, not be accused ourselves of being soft on domestic abuse. Being labelled as a domestic abuser has serious consequences for reputations, access to your children, there can be false allegations, and the noble Baroness Altman raised some of these concerns. At the very least, evidence must be thoroughly tested, especially when statutory, the statutory definition of abuse involves a range of what might be largely subjective accusations in terms of emotional controlling behaviour and so on. So I worry at the eagerness of my Lords to make cross-examination less robust. There should also be concern, as my noble Lord Moylan and Earl Linton and Lord Anderson of Ipswich noticed, about the, abuse, um, the domestic abuse protection orders and notices that give the police a nebulous bundle of unaccountable coercive powers. Orders can be granted without anyone being formally tried and based on the authority's belief that abuse is threatened or based on third party, for example, the neighbours reporting. The police have the power to order someone to leave their home or neighbourhood even against their partner's wishes. Or consider what's known as Clare's Law, the right to know and the right to ask, where the government wishes to put guidance to the police on a statutory footing to drive its greater use. But doesn't that encourage the police to drag up your past in public? And that surely has risks. And does that not propagate the idea that once convicted of certain offences, you are simply beyond redemption, which goes against the spirit of as we see the law and justice? So can I finally appeal to my noble lords that we are dispassionate in approaching this legislation, that we have an all-rounded and holistic approach to the law, and not let our undoubted horror at domestic violence allow us to lower our guard when it comes to civil liberties and legislation new to the books.